Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. Today's guest, very well known to the show, and a new daddy to a son, Jackson, our good friend, Boston Lloyd. You're a dad. Can you believe it? Yeah, man. It's, it's crazy. And like, when you hold him and stuff, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Dave, it's funny. Like, everyone, like, did you cry? I, I have a question. Did you cry when your kid came out? Oh, yeah. I cried. I'll tell you what I cried. They, they took my son out and then they put him in the, they had to like suction him a little bit and they had him in this little like heated like uh, cradle and I went over there and I, he grabbed my finger and that was it. I was, I was bowling. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, it's funny because everyone's like, you're going to cry this and that and like, I'm not like, I, I'm not an, an emotional guy at all, right? So yeah. like, I'm like, well, you know, there's no way. Um, and like she had an emergency C-section, so I was the first one to see the baby because I was in the procedure room. I saw it all. Oh, wow. And, yeah, they, they took him out and he started crying and they put him on the table and I saw him and stuff. And that's really before the swelling even happened because it was so immediate. Right. So you didn't really see the swelling or the bruising yet. And uh, Dave, I, I, I was emotional as fuck. Like I felt emotional. Right. But I couldn't, I couldn't cry because I, I think it was because I was on a grandma trend. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. I, I didn't take that into account. Now, talk, walk us through the procedure because Ariella was was overdue, and did they induce her or did she go into okay. labor? Okay, so they put this stuff in in her. So when we got there, Dave, um, she was ten weeks post, uh, ten days post due. Right. And they, they we should have just went home because they 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 checked her and she was dilated zero, Dave, zero. Wow. So they put this thing in her. Um, in, her, in her vagina to make her um, to make her uh, basically dilate. Right. So she started to dilate, and then she broke water. And then we're sitting around a while. They're like, "All right, you're one centimeter dilated, you're two centimeter." And then finally, you know, hours and hours later, she was nine centimeters dilated. And the doctor was like in a rush, so he pushed her to ten. He pushed her cervix to ten. Right. And like I'm looking there, I'm like, she's like barely open, and you could see the kid's head like inches back. I was like, there's no way this kid's coming out. So finally I had to tell her, you know, I said, I said, baby, you're, you're going to need a C-section because they didn't let her push more than five minutes, Dave. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they, they know usually if something's not going to happen, you know, that they're pretty experienced, especially if it's a first birth. So, so they wanted to do the C-section. So what did she said? No. Well, at first she wanted a natural birth. So, cause her, you know, her mom like kind of instilled that in her head. So what they did was they. They, uh, they, they use the suction where they put the suction on the kid's head right. and they try to suck him farther back. That kept popping off. It was, Dave, it was like a murder scene. There was so don't, much. Don't you, would you think nowadays that they'd have something a little bit, you know, more uh, high tech yeah. than a suction cup? You know? Exactly. Like, I didn't, I didn't even know, like, Dave, like, I honestly didn't know that somebody could lose that much blood and survive. Because, like, we had to oh, wear really? these special things around our shoes in, in the in the surgery room. Right. Hey, there was blood everywhere. Oh I was like, God. how can you lose that much blood? It sounds like, you know, when I was a kid, they had this thing called Nerf Nerf basketball, and it was like a suction cup. You'd suction it onto, like, anything, the wall. That was, you, Dave, it was a Nerf. It was a Nerf suction. <laughs> <laughs> how come they can't come up with something better than that? It, and, it kept, and it kept popping off, so he tried that. He went through four of those Nerf suctions. <laughs> Then he then he pulls out the forceps and he's shaking, and he's like, oh, he's, no. "This guy's flushing us." But we found out later that the doctor is C-section crazy, Dave. Like this guy loves C-section. Oh, like, that's really? And don't get me wrong, Dave. He cut her great. Like you can't even tell she even got cut. Like this guy is like a C-section specialist. But like, come on, man. Like at least let her push a little bit. You know what I mean? Like five minutes. That's nothing. Right, right. I'm surprised. Now, what was his reasoning for not wanting to to, uh, to let her continue to push? Well, when they had that thing on her stomach, that heart rate monitor. Yeah. It, they showed the heart rate. They call it uh, they call it sensitizing, or they saw they they uh, deselling. They call it deselling. They saw his heart rate go down to like 100 and then come back up to 140. But then they put the thing up inside of her to get the real heart. This thing moves her. It, it, you know, the heart rate, you know, gets, you know, it's not really that accurate, but his heart rate wasn't dropping at that point. And then the doctor makes an idiotic statement. Like I need to get back to the office at six o'clock. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, oh, this guy really? Wow. It I'm was surprised bad. you didn't say something with your big mouth. We definitely, we definitely won't go back there, but I almost got, Dave, I almost got kicked out of the hospital, but not that one. 
but I almost got kicked out of the St. Pete Hospital. Um, maybe like this was like a week and a half ago. Well, the way it stopped me, it stopped there for a second. So, so they, they do the C-section, and then from the, the baby, obviously from the suctioning and the the forceps that they try to use to get the baby out initially, had some bruising, correct? Bruising and swelling on his. It was yes, yeah, his right side. So. It, it, he's in it, and it's 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 almost gone down completely now. He can open his eye because he couldn't open his eye before, Dave. I thought you had him squatting already, and he, and he blew some blood vessels in his eye. I, I, I wasn't sure. He's and he looks just like Ariella, man. It's like it's like it's like her twin, but yeah, very good looking uh, boy. So, and like I said, like he started seizuring, and, and a seizure for a baby is nothing like um, a seizure of, of an adult. It's not it's not frantic. It, it's basically like a little twitch. Right. You know what I mean? And um, they took him into the NICU. They gave him all this fucking meds, which that's what pissed me off. Um, and, and they refused to taper him off after the seizures stopped for, you know, the seizures had stopped for, you know, uh, five days. I go, come on. I go, you guys could, you guys could start tapering these drugs down. And they refused to. And that's when I, that's when I almost got kicked out. Oh, so because they moved, they, they brought him to the NIC, the NICU, right, at, at St. Pete Hospital? They brought him to the all children, the John Hopkins All Children Hospital in St. Pete. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a hospital only for children. Okay. They, that's what they specialize in. And like, they're like, oh, you could stay for free at the Ronald McDonald House across the street, Dave. <laughs> this is in the ghetto. I mean, like straight hood. You know, because a lot of these government funding places or whatever it is, um, you know, they're in the hood. You know what I mean? We Boston. We know the real reason you didn't stay there because you you didn't have your gear with you. Yeah, no, I, I like I said, Dave. I still been training and stuff like that. Like, it's not gonna help my kid any if I if I be a lazy fuck, you know. No, no. My wife wants to tell me to give you this advice: that uh, remember that the child is 100 percent is 50 percent yours, and that you should put the effort and and passion that you have in, of steroids into your baby, and you'll have you'll be a wonderful father. She said. Easily, but like <laughs> I said, you know, we and we don't. You guys travel more than we do. You know, we don't travel at all, and he's gonna. And we don't leave the house at all, so he should be in really good care. We don't us. travel anymore. I learned the hard way. Once I had baby, that was it. You Traveling don't travel was before the shows? What? You don't travel to shows anymore? No, I, I didn't go. I didn't even go to the Arnold this year because of the baby. Well, no, but you went to Nationals last year when you almost got kicked out, right? Right, yeah, but I was I drove there for like the day. That was it. You oh, know? Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So you're so you're in so St. Pete. You're driving an hour and a half each way to go to the hospital. And what what do you do? You you just hang out there and, and watch the baby. All day? Yeah, so basically we weren't able – for the first week, Dave, he was in an incubator. We couldn't even touch him or hold him. Oh, wow. So that's depressing, right? Yeah. So you're just like looking at your kid. I brought my laptop. I try to get work done, but it's hard to get anything done there. Yeah. Now we can finally hold him, and you're like in this little corner, Dave, and, yeah. and it's 75 degrees. And like I don't know, man. I'm on like Trent and Clen and fucking all this <laughs> shit. I'm like sweating my balls off. I'm so uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like, I saw you fell asleep uh, in one of your posts. Oh, I saw, every time I go there, Dave, I eat, I start profusely sweating, and I and I pass out. <laughs> but um, yeah, like honestly, like it structured me so much better because like now I know that like, I can't be a lazy ass. Like I can't eat like a fucking huge breakfast and sit on the couch for three hours and digest. So no. everything's been, been better. My weight's down 25 pounds. Um, I feel just healthier. Um, the drugs are still high, you know, but I, actually, Dave, you remember, You know how, like, my sleep schedule's fucked up? You know, like, how I go to bed at, like, 7 a.m., 8 a.m.? Yeah. And when I come off the drugs, like, when I came off the drugs a year ago, my sleep schedule went back to normal. I go, that's fucking weird. Like, my body just wanted to go to bed at night, you know what I mean? And I'm like, that's Imagine fucking that. weird. So, Dave, I finally dropped the growth dose. I, I only take growth hormone now four times a week, okay? I do three units of, of um, three IUs of uh, farm grade and three IUs of a generic. Right. So I only take six IUs of GH four times a week. Now, the other three times, I use peptides three times a day on my off days because I'm, I'm on a four-day training split right now because of, you know, the kid and all the traveling. I'm just training four times a week. Right. Uh, Dave, my sleep schedule just went back to normal after a week and a half. Really? So it has to do with the crazy GH that was fucking my, my T4 up because I was sleeping all fucking day and then I couldn't go to bed when I needed to. You were throwing so, your, your circadian rhythms off, yeah. Yeah, the GH, whatever, whatever the high GH did to my thyroid or whatever the fuck, it fucked me up, Dave. I was going to bed at 7, 8 a.m. every day. 
Yeah, well, you know, what do you think about the Dorian Yates uh, dosage of taking 16 IUs uh, uh, three times a week? I, I, a lot of people say uh, doing it every other day is like is like really good, but I didn't hear I didn't hear that until you just told me that. But I mean, shit, yeah. you know what I mean? I think there's so many different ways to skin a cat, Dave. Oh, but yeah, I think course. at the end of the day, it all it all comes down to genetics. Yeah, of course. Now, are you uh, since you have a new father now and uh, you have more responsibilities, I would assume, are you going to cut back your uh, your drug usage at all? No, like. Uh, it's funny you say that. You remember we talked like maybe a couple weeks ago, no, like a month ago, on like we had Big Lenny on here, and I told you I'm yes. using that, un and I told you I bought like all that unsterile gear that comes in like gallons. Yes. I actually just started that shit the uh, the other day, so so no, I'm not. I'm actually taking more risks. I'm, oh. re I'm reusing needles. I'm saving more money. Everything's cut. Everything's cut. <laughs> Well, don't don't get any more infections. We don't need any. No, of that. Dave. I I think I've gotten so many infections at this point that my body is just like we we'll, like. We're not gonna ever let. Don't you Don't even, don't even like challenge yourself to that because you'll be, uh, you'll be back in the hospital. You'll be in the NICU with the right next to your kid. Yeah, no, I, I, Dave, so, and honestly, like uh, reading about a lot of antibiotics and stuff, like I don't really think they're like necessary. Like I think you should just keep draining your shit until it completely drains out because these antibiotics could do more harm than good. Yeah, well, if, if, the, if the the problem is when the bacteria gets into your bloodstream, that's when you need to take antibiotics because it becomes systematized. Have you, have you heard of the antibiotic clindamycin? Yeah, it's very strong. Yeah, that's, that's the one that knocks it out quick, so I'm gonna, I, I got a, a lot of that on hand. Yeah, it's, it's got more side effects, that's the problem. Now, yeah, but it, I'd rather run that shit for like four days than run that other crap for 14 days, you know I, what I mean? Yes. Now here, here's the problem. You, you, your son hasn't come home yet, so you still it still hasn't. The reality of the whole birth yeah, has not has, kicked in sleep, yet. My sleep is fine. Like you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I wait till tomorrow when he comes home. You, the, you get some whole new ball game. Let me tell you. Yeah. And I told Ariel like I really hope she does like she's been doing the whole breast milk thing and and I love it. You know what I mean. But I hope she does supplement a little bit of formula because she's. You know, and finally she's listening a little bit. She's starting to, you know, doing a little bit of supplementation with a little bit of formula and stuff like that, like, you know, every once in a while, you know, because I, I think that, you know, that there's probably pros and cons to both of them. Is she pumping the milk and just giving it to the hospital? Is that what she's doing? Yeah, yeah. You're pumping every two hours, you bring it to the blood bank, I mean, the, the milk bank, and then they give her like a free milk ticket. What does the mil what does a milk t free milk ticket do? Like, she can go downstairs and buy any kind of food she wants. Oh, really? No, yeah. but are are they using the milk that she's giving them for your son? Yes, one hundred percent. Now is she staying at the hospital o overnight? No, you can't really stay there. It's it's kind of depressing, Dave. Like honestly, it's like the nurse. Some of the nurses are bitches. Like you can't bring any kind of food in there. Like oh, it's really? fucked up. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So but all no, right, so the baby comes home. What what's the schedule? Have you and Ariella decided like who's going to do what? Well, I'm going to start, like, Dave, like, I, I, I could have went without kids, like, not forever, but I, I could have went another five to ten years without kids. My dad had me at 36, right? So my dad had me ten years yet, uh, older than – I could have went without kids. And when we sat down, she – Dave, she really wanted kids for whatever reason. So I said, all right. So I basically told her, like, you know, you're going to have to stay at home and you're going to – and I think that's basically the same kind of thing that you have with your wife, it looks like. But. No, it's not. It's a, I believe me. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, still do. My, I'm gonna still do my work and all that stuff, yeah. and still train, and everything is gonna be enhanced, Dave. I'm already. I'm already more focused. My weight's down to 250. I'm, I look like I could get on stage in a couple weeks. I so mean, you, I, huh? are you saying that you've uh, you've uh, been relinquished of responsibility because you gave her the the baby ahead of schedule? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? I mean that you know. In other words, you're, you're implying that Ariel is going to do most of the work because the, correct, because, she is. Okay, and she agreed to that. Yeah, before we even had kids. I, yeah, but you know what? It all changes now, dummy. <laughs> Don't you know? It, Once you have the kids, I'll, the I'll, rules I'll, are I'll, the, all the agreements are null and void, my friend. I'll hold him. I'll cuddle him. I'll babysit <laughs> him, and all that stuff. She'll be breastfeeding. I'm going to start feeding. Do is I mean, what else is there to do with a newborn? You know yeah. what I mean? It's not like we're gonna be like, you know. You got to get up at least once a night and, and feed. That's the that's the key. Well, no, like I'm I'm here. I'm home all day, so I'm gonna be with them all day. But all right. as, as far as uh, you know, I'm gonna be home all day, so it's it's. I mean, 
what else besides losing sleep and having a crying baby yeah. and, you know, changing diapers and stuff, what else more? You That's know, true. You really don't do very much of anything else. Well, you rerun your website and everything like that and all your shipping and stuff like that, right? No, I don't do any shipping. It's just client stuff. I have oh, really? Partner, no, I don't do any of that crap. Dave, I don't leave the house except when I go to the gym. <laughs> you got a great, a great life. It's a perfect life for kids. You could probably have a few more. And, and yeah, not. like Dave, like literally, like I have a YMCA that's walking distance. I'll start training there, but Dave, like I don't know if I don't know if you can help me on this, but lately, since I fixed my sleep schedule, I'm training at the gym at around normal hours now, not at like 1 a.m. in the morning and shit. Right. These guys, or women too, that they fucking won't shut up, Dave. Like. I cannot get a good pump. Oh, because people are talking to you too much. Yeah, huh? I, 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 it's killing me, man. Because I, I usually train at one a.m. in the morning. Nobody bothers me. Right. And now everyone's like, "Oh, I, I actually, Dave, you know me. I'm like super calm. Like, I almost, I blow up on this guy at the gym, and then I almost get kicked out of my kid's hospital because I blow up on the neonatal <laughs> nurse. It's the trendalone. You're on too much trend. Yeah, you I'm, just, I, I'm always on trend balloon. I run trend year round. I don't get off that. No. So it, it's like a, I'm like immune to trend. I just interviewed Jordan Peters. He told me the same thing. He can run a lot of trend. It doesn't doesn't affect him. Yeah, it doesn't affect me, Dave. I think I've run it so long, and you know, I I, I do all that crazy shit. I, I even run trend suspension on training days, and um, really, I don't know. I, no, I don't feel any drugs anymore. It's kind of fucked up. Yeah, you, you're kind of numb to it. Now, uh, when you drive around outside, do you get do you get into like do you get road rage and stuff like that at all? No, I'm super calm. Like I literally, Dave, that last week. I think it was with everything about them medicating my kid and me telling them, like, I went in there and I said, look, I said, we're coming in tomorrow with the car seat and we're taking my kid. And then they threatened to call CPS on me. And then the security guards briefed me and shit. So <laughs> after that, and then this guy comes up to me in the gym who was a, who literally, he was stalking me two years ago. Yeah. He came up to me and he was like, why did you block me on Facebook anyways? Like, like, while I was already talking to someone else and I flipped out, like, I was like, get the fuck out of my face. Like, and like, I don't say that shit. Like, Dave, I don't even like, I don't raise my voice. So like literally in one week I blew up on two people yeah. and I, literally Dave, we were in the, we were in the, in the room with the nurses and the doctors. I go, this is fucking bullshit. I was like, you, 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 you. I said something like you bunch of doctors are full of fucking shit. And I walked out. <laughs> I guess that the doctors probably don't like you too much. I take it. No, they hate me, Dave. Like the the main like they they're all like, oh, you're the dad. Like, oh yeah, fuck you. Like, yeah, I'm the dad. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't know who you are, do they? No one recognizes you. Do no, they? but Dave, I, I flipped out and I told them I'm a steroid addict. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So at, at that point, at that point, I gave up because I was like, all right, like I just admitted I'm like a steroid addict and shit, and that fuck <laughs> antibiotics and I don't use them and shit. So like right. I flipped out on him. So then I'm like, wow. Like if they do call CPS, they're gonna be like, he's a steroid addict. Yeah. Now when you when you're in the hospital room, like you know, with all the stuff, the delivery in the delivery room, are you like going through drawers and stuff like that, looking for uh, you know stuff Dave, that might benefit you? Yeah. I was wondering, do you think you have GH at the premature plate? Like, because uh, ninety percent of those kids are premature. You think they got growth in there? I don't know. If it's a children's hospital, they probably have it somewhere there. You should go. Uh, you should go like looking around. You know. I wonder. I wonder what the felony would be if I, if they caught me was still in GH. Probably <laughs> pretty bad, but you know. But yeah, you know, who's gonna catch you? What <laughs> lunatic would be going into the kids' refrigerators looking for GH except for you? Actually, you know what, Dave? Tomorrow I'm gonna ask the nurse and be like, "Do you guys uh, give GH in this place?" I'm they might even that. have IGF there for all you know. You that know? would be crazy. Imagine that Boston comes home with like you know like like twenty kits of like uh, Humatrol. Would they or have like, Dave? Would it be that? Would it be Incrilex or what would it be? Yeah, it would be all prescription. It would be Incrilex. It would be like uh, Humatro probably or Nootropin. Uh, wow. Be great. Yeah, you'd hit the jackpot over there. Well, your life is about, like I said, is about to change. You know, uh, I think uh, tomorrow is going to be the awakening. But uh, you, you know, you're good. You're good at adapting to new situations. In, in what way, though, Dave? Like. If you think that my diet's gonna go to shit and like I'm not gonna train, like there's no way. No, you will. It all depends. You know what? Your your livelihood will all be dependent on how happy your wife is. So remember that. The happier you make her, the easier it will be for you. So. Yeah, but Dave, like I, I mean, shit. She has it pretty easy, man. Like I, I fully support her. I understand uh, that, but she, you know, when she stops sleeping and the baby's keeping her up all night, she, you know, it changes your personality a little bit. It makes it hard. You start getting irritable, both of you. You know. If she can sleep throughout the day, any time with the kid, 
I mean, is she really going to? She can never that? sleep because she's got to constantly be nursing. This th these babies, they don't they they sleep and then they wake up and cry and then they sleep and they wake up. It's like nonstop. So, so the, with you, has how has it affected you? Well, it was it's it was tough. You know, it's tough because you know you always got to be on alert. You, you, you can't be like abs the absent-minded professor anymore. Like with my son, who's two, you know, a little over two, I have to always be watching where he's going. And then with the baby, she's always crying, and you always have to come. You, you can't just let a baby cry. You know, they, they, they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. So, Dave, you know, how much harder is it to have two kids than one, though? Way harder. Way harder. One is was not as bad. Two is is way harder. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I don't I don't think I'm gonna want another kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, you might as, at this point you might as well get them all over with. Get have another one and then you're done. You know. Well, shit, Dave. I was hoping for the fucking twins. That's why I we know. were hammering. That's why we were hammering that clomid. But you're, you're clear you didn't work out too well. <laughs> you're lucky. You're lucky you didn't get like eight. But then again, you probably could have had a good reality show at that point, right? Yeah, I mean, Dave. Like, I don't know that that whole clomid thing. I don't know because I have all the all my clients doing that for the fertility. Oh, they, no, I haven't had any twins yet or heard no. of any twins yet. But Dave, I heard they have this thing now. You pay two thousand dollars. Yeah. And and you can pick the sex of your kid. I heard that, yeah. They spin down the sperm and everything like that. But um, I guess that's not a bad idea. But, you know, it's yeah, just a pain. Honestly, I would pay the two grand to make sure I had a daughter next. Cause, you know, like one son and one daughter. You know, I think I'd pay the extra. So right. you got lucky. You guys didn't have to pay anything. You guys, you guys got lucky. I know. Lucky. We got one and one. It was. Uh, that's perfect. I, I think. I think if I was to have another kid, I'd want one and one. I, I, I would love to see like a mini Ariella or, yeah. you know, and so far this kid looks just like her, like the cheeks, the eyes. I, we put sick. the picture up. He does look just like her. Yeah. So, I mean, and a lot of people say, I don't know with your kids, like your two, your two year old, did he come out looking more like one or the other and then, and then change? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He looked a lot. He looked more like me when he came out, I think. And now he's, I start seeing, you know, I start seeing both of us in him. He, see, my son I, looks like my dad actually more than me, you know, in terms of facial really, structure. I, I see Amanda. I see Amanda and your son a lot. Yeah. You know what it is? As they grow, they change and, and you'll see different mannerisms and different, you know, um, features. It's, it's because it's an amalgamation of both of you guys, you know what I mean? And all your relatives. So you'll see your uncle in there. You'll see your, your mother in there, you know, so. And at, and at this stage, too, you can't really, uh, your daughter, you can't really tell, right? Nah. I mean, my daughter looks like Logan, really. But she's, but she, I see a lot of my wife and my daughter uh, already, you know, especially her baby pictures I see it in. You know, but once again, they change so much when they start getting older that, you can't really, you know, what they look like as a baby is not what they're going to look like necessarily when they get older. Although my first grade teacher could run into me now and I'm 50 years old and she'll say, David Palumbo, <laughs> because I look the same. But uh, a lot of people change a lot when, from, from childhood to um, adulthood. Yeah, so. it'll, well, it'll, be, it'll definitely be an experience. And yeah. It, maybe if I completely get out of shape, I'll come back on here and say you were right and all that crap. But. <laughs> Oh, no, you're too, so you're, you're too selfish. You'll continue to go to the gym, I'm sure of it. Yeah, no, Dave, there's no fucking way, Dave. I'm going to get better. Like, <laughs> people are going to be like, what the fuck? Like, he's so much better now. Because before, I was doing dumb experiments with, like, food and stuff. Like, yeah. eat, overeating, uh, doing the cheat meals, going out to eat. Now I'm, like, at home, like, I'm eating six, seven clean meals a day. Like, I'm on fucking point. Oh, Dave. What, what's your what's your thoughts on um, on on the New York Pro before we head out of here? Um, Regan, to me, he looks like shit. <laughs> hey, but you know, as Chris Aceto would say, he always looks like shit up until like the last two weeks, and then he and then everything comes together. I think he's gonna have his work cut out for him. I think he'll be a you, top. You, now, would you bet money that he's gonna place top five? Because I don't think he's gonna be top five, Dave. Um. It's a good lineup. I don't know if I would put money on it, but I, I think he's got a physique worthy of top five. But you, you know how it goes. You have ten guys in that New York Pro that are all great, that are all really good, but five of those guys will be in shape. So but if Regan is one of those guys in shape, he'll be top five. Now, Dave, you're not working with uh, Juan Morel anymore, right? No. No, I don't do his diet. Now, he does is, his own diet. Is he, is, you think he could beat Nathan or no? I think if, uh, if, he, if, he, if he strikes the perfect balance between fullness and conditioning, he will. It's very tough for him because his metabolism is so fast. I think Nathan's got a little bit more firepower behind him at this point. But, you know, Nathan's also flying a long distance to come there. Although, I don't know if he's, he might be staying in the U.S. with, uh, what's his name, uh, Jensen. But would, you say, would you say Morel's metabolism was faster than yours? 
Um, it's pretty close. I, I think we probably have very similar metabolisms. I, think I thought he, he looked. I thought he looked best when he worked with you. Honestly, I, I really did. But yeah, um, well, you know, it, you know, he was also younger. So it, it, I, I think Juan's got the ability to beat Nathan, but I think you have to give the edge to Nathan because he's a little younger. He's you know on the up and up. He's on the rise right now. He's got slightly better legs than um, than Juan. And um, but I, I think Juan has got a better upper body when when it all is together. So it, it's it's really I think it's going to be between those two guys. But you never know. There's wild cards in the, in this lineup that could really you know make huge changes. Especially if Juan comes in too flat, maybe Nathan's too flat. Someone else steps in there, you know, and, and wins it. So I think it's good. I wish I was going, but I think it's going to be a great a great show. Oh, I think you won't, uh, well, you won't be there, huh? No, no. I'm like I'm not going anywhere for this this year. Um, I maybe I'll go to the Olympia if we have a sponsor, but it's it's just too hard with, with the two kids because if when there's one baby, my wife can you know take care of one baby. But when there's two, it's like you can't watch both. It's impossible, you know. So it's, yeah, it's, so you guys had them real close together, so they're both not potty trained yet, right? No, no, yeah. Logan's a, he's a little on the slower side with the uh, with boys. Don't get potty trained as early as girls. My my daughter will probably be potty trained at the same at the same time my son is. Yeah, I they, think, they, they say girls are better with that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, boys are a little there. Yeah, I you know what I always tell people. People don't believe this because they think you know. Well, Dave's a, a smart guy. I'm a slow learner, but once I learn things, I learn it really well, and I can articulate it well, and I and I own it. But it take it takes me a longer time to to uh, to learn skills because I'm I'm so methodical about how I do it, and I just don't pick things up quickly. But I pick them up once I pick them up, though I know them really well, and I think that that's you know that's a testament to why I probably like, work so hard. You know, like you're not you're not good with like social media and technology, right? No, I'm good with it. I'm just lazy. Okay. I yeah, I pick up I'm tech tech things I'm very good at. I I mean I edit all my own videos. Oh, like when Johnny Styles left, it wasn't you weren't stressing? No, because I, I, I could edit video myself. The only thing I, I can't do is I can't sit behind a TV box and be in front of the camera at the same time. So that's why when Tyler the uh, creator came along, it was like God sent an angel to me because you know he's even better than Johnny and he's more technically skilled and, and, and his video, video editing skills are better. So there's always someone better than you out there. That's why I always say it to people. I'm like, I'm not the best, I'm good, but there's always someone better than you out there, whether it be on a bodybuilding stage or an intellectual stage. Um, there's always some new guy or new person coming up that, that has a better skill set. I hope my son can take all the knowledge I have and, and, and go beyond me. That, that's what you always hope for your kids, right? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. That's why I always laugh when these like money hungry chicks will leave a dude when they're, when they're, when they're fucking down and out <laughs> for some other dude. Cause then it's like, well, you know, there's somebody better than him and there's somebody better than him. That's why I always laugh when I, when, you know, people talk about dick size, it's like, okay, you know, somebody's. You know, somebody has a bigger dick than him too. Like, who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? Here, here's my question: Who has a bigger uh, penis, you or Big Lenny? Actually, Dave, it's so weird that you said that. Somebody sent me a picture of his dick. <laughs> well, he's, he did a porn video on Pornhub. Did you know that? No, but what, was his dick big? No, it was kind of small. What? Yeah. Wasn't he fucking bragging on your podcast that he had a big dick? I don't think so. I don't know if he did. Maybe he did. Yeah. It could just look small because his stomach is so big. But I. It's, yeah. uh, Honestly, Dave, like I used to record myself having sex and shit. Yeah. When I was like, when I was like bloated, like, like fuck, uh, and I was like, wow, that's disgusting. Like, it looks like a little, <laughs> like, I was like two, two eighty, like fat as fuck, and like, <laughs> like, so like, and then I'm like, wow, like my dick looks terrible, and then like, and then. And then when you get lean, it's true. Like you, it looks like a more aesthetic. Like it's like a more aesthetic look. I, but I actually had measured my dick when I was like 17, and it was like 5.5, and I was like, "Fuck, that's small as fuck." But then, but then when you when you actually do the research online, like five and a half to six is average. So right. I guess I'm not. I don't have a micro dick by any means. But. <laughs> have, you, have you tried any of those like ex, um, those stretching technology things they have? I haven't tried any of that. Uh, I, I no, I haven't even. I, I want to try those dick rings, though. I guess you put the. the it makes you last longer because I have a problem. I don't know if it's the drugs, but I, I Dave, I'm a two pump chumper, man. I, I don't know. I can't last. <laughs> you, you might, yeah, you might be on a little bit too many drugs. That could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, like I, I need to, I need to figure something out. You got to put like I three condoms to desensitize, you know, a little bit. I used to jack off with condoms. It was actually kind of expensive because I didn't want to clean up everywhere, you know. I, mean, <laughs> I, used, 
I used to steal condoms from the 99 cent store when I was like 16. Just like... <laughs> Boston's got these great ideas. You see, <laughs> who would think of this stuff? That's a creative thinker for you, Boston. And then, and then Dave, I started when then, then I was like, fuck this. I, I, I didn't want to get caught stealing, right? So I used to come in my socks. <laughs> your your <laughs> poor my, mom. My mom caught me. She was like, why is her socks on top of the fucking, on, on top of the, because uh, I would just, I wouldn't use them again. I would just throw them. You know, I would come in them and I would throw them on top of my bed frame. She was like, why are all these crusty ass socks? Uh, <laughs> or then Couldn't you throw like, them in the garbage? She was like, why is there, she was like, son, why is there son. fingerprints in the Vaseline? <laughs> I, would, I would just scoop out Vaseline before I jacked off. But yeah, man, it was funny. My mom have a, me and my mom have a weird relationship because like, <laughs> she's got me like, over here. Room, like dumb shit. Like I used to walk around with condoms on and then they would fall off. And then like she would find them on the ground. She was like, you can't just walk around with condoms on. And I, like, I just didn't know. You, know? <laughs> you can't write this stuff, really. I mean. But yeah, that'll that'll be a good ending to a phase. Yeah, but yeah, maybe yeah, maybe yeah. Get me and Big Lenny on here, we could fucking talk about how smaller dicks I don't, are. Yeah, yeah, and maybe you might have some more creative ideas that Lenny could employ in some of his uh, antics that he does. But yeah, you should go on you a Pornhub and check out his uh, his porn video that he did with a saw, uh, a transsexual. Remember, uh, well, what is it under? Because I remember Nick Tregilly's porno was on there too. I had to see that one. It's Big Lenny with the transsexual or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's, okay. How many I'll Big just... Lennies are on Pornhub? Do, do a search. Actually, someone sent me a link to Pornhub. Someone animated a porn video with Lenny in it. It's like a, it's like, it's the most incredible thing you've ever seen. It looks just like Big Lenny. Did and you, it's like a really, it's a really muscular, like hot looking girl. But then when you see his face, it looks like uh, Chris Rock, you know? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go check it out after we get off here. I right. watch this Don't show. jerk off with any condoms on, though. <laughs> all right. Boston, great uh, talking to you, and, and congratulations on uh, becoming a father. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. All right, we love you. And that's going to take us to the end of another episode. What an episode that was <laughs> of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and we'll see you next time.